Hey everyone, Jerry from Lightlever here. Welcome to our Microsoft 365 in Practice series, where we share practical tips for Microsoft 365, SharePoint, Teams, and related products. I hope that you learned something and enjoy the ride. What is Microsoft 365 and how might it help your organization and your staff? First of all, let's set some context. So working from home is now our reality. We've got people working not just in different locations, but at different times of the day. And uh, email and telephone are inefficient. Information sharing, therefore, must be accurate, timely, and easy to do. One study showed that people spent up to 60% of their productive time looking for information to do their jobs. That's of their productive time, people. And interesting, most people, a survey said that most people feel more productive when they're away from the office. This is a 2012 survey. So let's take a look at a Microsoft 365. Microsoft 365 is sold as a subscription model, also known as software as a service, meaning you pay for it monthly rather than all of it up front. It does include office applications such as Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, etc. Of course, it's got all our server type applications like Microsoft Exchange, which gives us the email and shared calendars capability, SharePoint for file management and collaboration, and Teams for remote communication and organization. This is, of course, Microsoft Teams. Uh, Microsoft 365 supports a lot of mobile applications and web applications, really powerful feature of it. And external sharing, so you can share your content with people outside of your organization. And 24 by seven support is available online and by email or phone. So your small business gets big business tools. Formerly, a lot of these tools and applications were only available to large organizations with large budgets and big server rooms with uh, IT teams supporting them. So now all of these tools are available to small business on a subscription-based model. This subscription is approximately $16 per user per month. Uh, this is at the time of this writing, it can change, and it also depends on which plan you choose. So this is for the business essentials plan. So what, why do we care about all this? Well, the subscription based makes it flexible, simple, and it goes under your operations budget rather than your capital budget with no infrastructure cost. The infrastructure is already set up by Microsoft in some big bunker somewhere. We don't have to do anything except, you know, scan a credit card. So uh, it's, uh, it's easy and instantaneous really to get up and running. World-class security, because Microsoft 365 is centrally located and has a lot of money behind it, it has the best security, web and uh, physical security that money can buy some of the best in the world, making sure your data is safe. It's cloud-based, so it's available anywhere you have an internet connection. And the capability of sharing I mentioned, mentioned earlier is just really powerful. You can share your content with your partners or your uh, clients or your uh, contractors, whoever you want. And it gives you lots of storage. Each individual person in your organization gets one terabyte of storage. Plus there's a bunch of shared storage as well that comes with a 365 purchase. Because it's cloud-based and as a service, you always have the latest version of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Exchange, SharePoint, Teams, etc. They're always upgrading and advancing it. So ultimately, I like to think of it as a game changer for small business and nonprofits. You no longer have to have that little closet with a server in it where you're always trying to uh, get your nephew to come in and maintain it or upgrade it or do the backups. And you have, uh, now you have all of this enterprise level security, enterprise level software, all of these powerful tools are available to you in this uh, subscription based package. 
And Microsoft 365 is currently being offered for the basic version. Anyway, you can get six months free if you sign up for a year. So 50% saving. Yay. So the keys to Microsoft Office 365 is you can connect from anywhere as long as you have an internet connection. You go to office.com in your browser and to your office email address and your password and you're now in the office. There you go. So what does Microsoft 365 give me? There's a bunch of apps that come with Microsoft or applications. So I've done a screen capture of my subscription. Depending on your plan, you may have more or fewer apps shown. And this can change because Microsoft's always adding stuff and removing some things. So let's take a look at some of the most important apps here. So the office programs you're used to seeing Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint, Word. The tasks is just your, your tasks, your to-do in Outlook. And people is the, what they're calling contacts. So all of these things are available through your standard Office programs that you're used to seeing. And then there's some additional tools here, such as Calendar, which is like Outlook, but it's just the calendar. You've got OneDrive to store your files and get access to them anywhere and synchronize them to your local computer. OneNote is a really powerful note taking tool. If you haven't used it, you may want to check it out. It's kind of interesting. Some people love it. Some people don't. There's a whiteboard and uh, you also see I have Visio here. That's an add-on. So any additional Microsoft programs like Visio or Microsoft Project can be purchased and added on to Microsoft 365 for additional monthly fee. There's a bunch of collaboration communication tools. These are the ones that interest me most. Um, We've got forms here to create forms and gather information. Stream is like your very own YouTube server, and you can organize it how you like. So it's a, it's a video server. And uh, Teams and SharePoint, I'll talk more about in a moment. And then there's some additional tools like Planner, which is a very simple project management tool, really task management. Delve that gets you information about other people in your organization, what they're working on, what their interests are, click to contact them. Sway, which is a interactive reporting, kind of a presentation tool. And this is Yammer, which is like Twitter, but it's private to your organization. So everything we're showing here, of course, is private to your organization, unless you choose to share it with somebody outside. This is the administration portal where you can set up your users and groups and manage all the settings for your Microsoft 365 subscription, your billing, your licensing, etc. It's all there, one-stop shopping. There are some compliance tools for legal and regulatory compliance, depending on what your organization might need. And there's a whole section for security. Security is very important in 365. There's some automation and customer interaction tools. Uh, bookings is one where you can allow people to book appointments with you online. So your customers can come in and check your calendar out the way you set it up to check out. And Power Apps and Power Automate are really cool, powerful, powerful tools that uh, just good, skilled end users, just about anybody, can create mobile apps with Power Apps and can create workflows or business rules, automated business rules with Power Automate. There's also Dynamics 365 that might be included in your, your subscription. And this is a full-blown uh, CRM capability, highly configurable, very powerful tool. So I want to talk a little bit about SharePoint because SharePoint is one of the key tools that we use to collaborate. And it really brings a lot of value to your organization. So it's a collaboration tool, meaning that it gives us the capability of working together towards a common goal. And I like to define the word tool this way, something that makes a job faster, easier, or better. So that's what SharePoint is doing, is helping us work together in a faster, easier, or better way. Or it's a tool that helps us to work together faster, easier, or getting a better result. 
So SharePoint has got a lot to it. It's a huge platform, but we have SharePoint sites and it, within them are pages. And the new thing is modern pages in SharePoint. You can make some beautiful sites like a website, again, internal to your organization. Lots of document management features, document libraries that have version control and sharing and uh, metadata tagging and all kinds of great powerful features. Shared calendars, shared tasks, shared news where you can post something and anybody who logs into your 365 will see it. And uh, sharing with external people as well as internal. It's all the sharing is run by what we call the permissions engine. And it's important to note that even though all of this stuff resides on the cloud, we have this permissions firewall, this wrapper that goes around. So somebody, everybody, anybody has to log in to your site in order to get access to any of your uh, SharePoint tools here. So we like to think of SharePoint as a one-stop shop. So it's a shared place for the information, maybe all the information needed to run your business. And it very easy to create a shared homepage or an intranet or a corporate portal for your company or your nonprofit. You can also create separate sites for your teams or divisions or projects or departments or initiatives very easily in SharePoint. The permissions, as mentioned, specify who can access what. And ultimately, SharePoint can reduce email because it becomes a go get the information you need scenario rather than asking people where is it. It can really make a huge difference. So this is a Microsoft blurb on what SharePoint is. Maybe it's Microsoft marketing, but I think it's well worded because in summary, it provides a single efficient place that you can collaborate to find your organizational resources and share. So this is what SharePoint boils down to. And Gartner Group, which is a very well-respected IT think tank and research organization, um, say using SharePoint can save money and improve your workers' productivity. And I quote, yay. So let's talk about Microsoft Teams, then we're almost done with this presentation. So what is Teams? It's a unified communication and collaboration platform. So it provides web-based video calling, meetings, voice over IP, you know, talking with your computer or your iPhone or your Android. Uh, it provides persistent workplace chat. So again, it's private to your organization and you can chat with anybody real quick little messages. Uh, hey, Jeannie, did you deal with the, uh, the, the Robinson account, da, 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 those sort of things. And they're persistent. Every time I come back into Teams, those messages with Jeannie are still there. I can view them anytime I want and search them very easily. Teams does have a file storage and editing capability. As a matter of fact, the storage of the files is in SharePoint that we just talked about. So behind the scenes, it's all integrated. So there it is, integrated with Office and SharePoint. Teams is a competitor to some tools such as Slack, which you may have heard of, and it evolved from Skype for Business and before that from Link and before that from Live Meeting. And many of us in my circle, which is uh, Office 365 Microsoft consultants, are really excited what the offering is in Teams. It looks really good. Hey, I'm Jerry Brimacombe, and this has been another episode of Microsoft 365 in Practice. Please let me know if you have any questions and your comments and subscriptions are welcome. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.